Hi everybody, it's January the 30th, just about at the end of the month, and tomorrow we'll be at the end of the work week. How about that? John Branham announces that it's back by popular demand. Parks and Recreation Director Johnny Burge says he can't wait for basketball weather. Charlotte Underwood's story features the La Follette Court Assisted Living Center this week. These are some of the stories that we've got coming up right now on your news at 530. John Branham announces that it's back by popular demand. Branham, who heads up the county's small business incubator known as SBI, is hosting another free seminar on Obamacare. That's short for the Affordable Care Act of 2010. Branham explains that this legislation continues to generate a great deal of discussion and questions, and this seminar is an opportunity for small business employers and employees to better understand how this legislation may impact them. The seminar with a provided lunch is Thursday, February 13th from 11.30 until 1 p.m. at the Small Biz Incubator at Jacksboro. For more information and to register, contact Branham at 423-201-8306. That's 201-8306. The meeting site is the SBI office located on the second floor of the Weirwoods offices of Community Trust Bank. Parks and Recreation Director Johnny Burge says he can't wait for baseball weather, so this weekend the first baseball coaches meeting is set for Saturday at 2 p.m. at the La Follette Community Center, the Old West La Follette School Cafeteria. Burge encourages anyone interested in coaching a team to attend Saturday's meeting. He says background checks are required. Sign-ups run February 9th through the 28th at the La Follette Community Center at 300 West Beach Street in La Follette. If you have any questions, Burge adds that you may call his office at 562-9424. Nearly three weeks have passed since the 46 La Follette Court Assisted Living Presidents were evacuated. The residents evacuated due to the sprinkler main freezing and bursting during the initial severe cold snap on January 8th. No one was injured and all residents were placed within three hours and back at the residence by 11 a.m. On the 10th, for the Residential Care Facility Administrator, Rhonda Graves, it was proof of a caring and efficient staff and community coming together. Graves said things could have not gone smoother due to the outpouring of support from both her staff and the community, especially the city. When the sprinklers went off about 4.30 p.m., it set our alarm off, which called the fire department. When they got here, water was flowing out the front door. We explained to the residents what was going on, and they all understood, Graves said. The fire department commended the facility on how quickly it was evacuated. They said it was a record, according to Graves, who said she wanted to thank her employees for their speedy response as well. Out of 30 employees, 25 were on site and assisting within the hour. They are what made La Follette Court so great. The La Follette Police Department responded and helped with assisting residents on the buses as well. Mayor Mike Stanfield came and got on the phone, and just bang, 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 he got it done. La Follette Court Marketing and Activities Director Robin Baird said Graves also said that she wanted to thank electrician Danny Graves and his staff for coming shortly 
after the pipes burst to begin repairs and inspections. ServPro was also on site and had it dried out with large fans within two hours. Everyone's response and cooperation was wonderful, Graves said. The experience taught Baird just how much the residents care about and miss one another. Come Friday, they were glad to be home. The Follett Court is located at 139 North Massachusetts Avenue, a family-owned and operated business. The residence was purchased by Graves' father, Ronald Locke, back in 2000. Locke had another assisted living residence in Mississippi, where he is from. When he first purchased the business, it was an independent living home, but according to Graves, he saw the need to establish a privately owned assisted living residence in the area. At the time of the purchase in 2000, there were only eight people living in the residence, which is able to accommodate 55. According to Graves, the Follett Court is more personal residence than perhaps others with large numbers. It's not just a job to us, it's a life to us, and so we want to make it a home to our residents. It's their home, and our staff feels the same way, Graves said. She added that the job wasn't for everyone. Our employees have to be kind, compassionate, and caring, or they don't work here. It takes a special kind of person to care for my residents, Graves said. She added, at La Follette Court, we treat you like family because we care. La Follette Court offers a variety of standard features, such as electric and cable, three delicious meals served daily, seven days a week in an eloquent dining room, scheduled transportation to the mall, doctors and other shopping activities, in the La Follette area, beautiful landscape grounds, bath and bedroom cleaning, flat linens are provided, laundry service provided for flat linens and personal items, social and recreational activities, a television lounge with fireplace, sitting lounge, beauty salon, a chapel, and a nurse call system and rooms. Safety features include staff on duty 24 hours a day, 24-hour security door system located next to Tenova Hospital across from ambulance and helipad services, sprinkler system, smoke and fire detection system, emergency call system in each room, live-in staff, and the nurse on staff. The residents also offer support services, furniture rental if needed, and guest units for out-of-town guests. VA assistance is available for those who qualify. At La Follette Court, we're dedicated to providing you with the very best in carefree retirement living. We offer a first-class facility and services that cater to your every need, said Graves. For more information, rates or to set up an appointment for a tour, call 562-6730. That's 562-6730. Wednesday afternoon, Sheriff Robbie Goins told WLAF that he's offering a $500 cash reward for the Fieldhouse Vandals. If you have any information, you're encouraged to call Detective Josh Carroll at 562-7446. And as if playing Oak Ridge, Carnes, Powell, Halls, and Clinton was not enough, the Campbell High basketball team battled four of these teams over the span of six days. That includes two back-to-back nights of games, tonight and tomorrow, and then again on Monday and Tuesday. It's a stretch of games similar to the old district tournament schedules. Campbell plays at Oak Ridge tonight, at Clinton tomorrow night, home with Carnes on Monday, and then Powell at John Brown Gym on Tuesday. And the regular season closes out on Friday, February 7th, 
with halls. WLAF has all the coverage. That's the news next, the press release from the Sheriff's Department coming up. And six people have been booked in to the Campbell County Jail in the past 24 hours. Joseph C. Fox, age 24, of Queener Road in Jacksboro, for violation of probation on a capious bench warrant and possession of a Schedule Three controlled substance. 31-year-old Melvin Harrell of South 8th Street, La Folly, on a capious bench warrant. Joseph Lee Johnson, 25, of High Street in Jellicoe, for resisting a stop-frisk halt search order, criminal trespassing, theft of property between $1,000 and $9,999, and vandalism over $1,000. Mark Brandon Longmire, 36, of Ellison Road, La Folly, on a KPS bench warrant. 46-year-old Chris Allen Thornsbury of Pleasant Ridge, La Folly, for simple possession of marijuana, and last today, Nathan E. Ward, 25, of Countryside Circle in Jacksboro, on a hold for Anderson County. And that's a look at our news and the Sheriff's Report for this Thursday. Stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming your way, and be sure to join us tomorrow. We'll be back with the the end-of-the-week edition of the news. Hey, Big Josh with you once again on this Thursday evening looking at our birthdays and anniversaries. Our birthday and anniversary club brought to you by your friends here at WLAF and Eastside Pizza and Deli. They're located in the Food Line Center. Hey, stop by, check them out. Tell them you heard about them right here and you'll want to try some of that delicious food up there. Looks like our birthday today, Janet Vaught is celebrating. Happy birthday to you, Janet. And we've got a few belated birthdays here. Anna Mae Spradlin celebrates, celebrated a birthday. Sheila Green had a birthday. Madison Payne uh, turned 10 years old on Tuesday. Hannah Norman celebrated a birthday. And Angie Kimberlin. And we hope all of you, Angie, Hannah, Madison, Sheila, and Anna Mae, all had a great birthday. And we hope, uh, Janet, you're having a good day today. Now, if you're celebrating your birthday or your anniversary today, for some reason we don't have your name on our list, hey, how about you go ahead and send it in, even if it's a little late, and uh, we have our drawing on Friday. And if we get your name in here, it makes you eligible. And you could win a birthday dinner for two, or a birth an anniversary dinner for two, or a birthday dinner for two, from your friends here at WLAF and Eastside Pizza and Deli, located in the Food Line Center. Hey, good Lord willing, see you tomorrow.